have the privilege this week, all this week, to have Dr. <laughs> Harrison Mungle with us. Welcome back to 700 Club Canada. Thank you. What a it, privilege and honor to be here. Right. And you know what? We always enjoy having you. It's been a while. It's been so a while. So we are glad you're here because you're going to hang out with us for throughout this week. And I'm looking forward to learning from you. I'm looking forward to the same. But first, I want to catch up. You, sure. How many kids do you have, Harrison? Seven. Seven children. Did amazing you hear that? Children. Seven children. Seven amazing children. That's awesome. And grandbabies? And grandbabies, we have two. We have five married, and wow. we have two grandkids. And Yeah, it's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I have four grandbabies. Wow. And ready for more. That's all I can say. Same here. We're ready for more. Right? Isn't it the best job in the I world? I wish God give us grandkids before he gave us children, you <laughs> I know, know, right? I know. It's so true. But... Well, you are such a blessing to so many. And when I said prolific writer, I mean this. We're going to talk about one of your latest books, Soul Care. We'll get there in a minute. But these books have recently been written. There's over 30 books that you've written. Over 30 books. Where do all these messages come from? I mean, there's leadership. There's, you know, mental health, right? There's relational health. I mean, so many topics to help people. You, you write, you speak as a motivational speaker. Where yeah. does it all come from? Well, you know, one of the things as we were talking earlier, I really believe God aligned our life, yeah. you know, with the right people to, to glean from them, to get information. 21 years working in mental health, psychiatry work, and being able to support individuals today and seeing the brokenness of people. It's like I felt like, why should one person hear it on a session? The whole right. world needs to hear it. Right. So one hour a day. Yeah. One hour a day. Put your, put your thoughts together. Put the book together. You'll be amazed how quickly you'll write a book. Well, like you said, I mean, this didn't come overnight. You've spent years studying. You have a few degrees under your name, yes. which is a lot of work. There's a lot of commitment. But that commitment to, to write it down, thank you for doing that. Because uh, I know you watching, myself, <laughs> we all have lots to learn. And, you know, today we're talking about conquering fear. I'm sure you see a lot of people in your practice that are struggling with fear. Yes. Like what is underneath this fear in our life? What's one of the primary challenges for people to overcome fear? You know, first of all, I think people need to understand that fear is really, um, you know, that, that thought of the unknown, not knowing what's going to happen. And, yeah. you know, as believers, I also believe there's a spirit behind fear that tries to cripple the mind. Yeah. Um, when people are then uh, living in a, in a life where a lot of things can contribute to that fear mindset that gets developed and, and it's almost like they get trapped in a world that needs to be broken. Yes. What are the things that contribute to that fear mindset? I think, you know, a lot of it is, as I said, like the different stresses that people go through in life, you know, like people have financial stresses, relationship uh, uncertainties, uh, so many unstable things with their jobs. Right. That's another a big aspect for fear that comes about. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of times with the patients I see right now, it's a lot of their past mm. affects, uh, are triggered by the current future and that kind of like holds them back and they they have a this fear in their mind of, can I really step forward? Can I move on with life? Right. You know, like, uh, so yeah. there's a lot, a lot. It'll, it'll take a couple sessions. To take a couple it. sessions? <laughs> We've got him here all week, so I'm going to work you for sure. So if somebody comes in, they're, they're struggling with fear, and you say there could be things from the past that's holding them back. It could be circumstances in their right. life. They don't see hope for the future. Um, what, do, what would be even one step or two steps that you, you encourage people to take in order to move forward? What's even one thing that they one encourage thing? you to do? Well, you know, from a clinical perspective, the goal is to really recondition the mind and restructure the way we think. Right. And uh, putting one or two things together, it's a process. You know, when I think when individuals come to a place in life understanding that they can draw the line in the sand and say okay. goodbye to the past and really focus on the future, fear would be able to let go of their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, because when uh, I deal with so many of individuals who are um, struggling with fear and as a result of fear, anxiety comes, panic attacks, triggers of PTSD. There's a, a whole, um, it's more than just fear. Yeah. I guess that would be the right way to address it. Yeah. And so putting one thing, of course, you know, as a believer, I really believe and I've seen how uh, prayer breaks that yeah 
fear that tries to swallow people in some ways. Yes, yes. Uh, but practical things is very important. Like people need to learn that unless they don't step out from that grip that they're yeah. holding on to, they wouldn't be able to be set free. 100%. You know, I wasn't the first one to say this, but one of my favorite phrases is do it afraid. You have to be able to step out in fear. Yes. Fear is a normal emotion mm -hmm. and that can, can be bring benefit in our life, but not to be debilitated by it, as right. you say. And stepping out in fear, sometimes it, it, well, it often begins with prayer. We're going to come back. We're going to talk more about this. And we're going to talk more about your book, Soul Care, Understanding Spirituality and Mental Health. Wow. It, <laughs> there's so much good things in this book. So we'll be right back to discuss Harrison's latest book, Soul Care. Well, the doctor's in the house, Dr. Harrison <laughs> Mungle. I'm learning already. Uh, you've written a book called Soul Care, Understanding Spirituality and Mental Health. Yes. I think this is a very important topic. Why did you write this book? I wrote this book um, actually because someone had asked for me to do a conference for about 400 ministers of Canada wow. um, to talk about this topic because there are a lot of individuals who are struggling in terms of is everything mental health, is it a demon or is it spiritual? Right. And uh, so that's kind of where the thought process evolved. Mm -hmm. And knowing that we were made body, soul, and spirit, you know, the church has been focused a lot on the spiritual uh, part of man and also some, to some extent the body, the physical, but the soul, which incorporates the, the mind, the, the will, and the emotion. I think uh, that's a part that was lacking in terms of, understanding, having a better understanding about it. Well, I think it's really good. And as I read your book, you're right. We can, it's not to dismiss the spiritual aspect right. of mental health, which I really appreciated that because that's a real factor, which we'll talk in a minute. But there's, are, we're complex beings, mm -hmm. body, mind, and spirit, as you said, body, mind, and soul. And so as we look at the soul of a person, the mind, the emotions, the will, right. you know, this is just such a healthy way to understand how humans uh, respond to things in this life. But what is, if we can address for a minute, what you say not everything is a demon. Right. But what is the role of the enemy, Satan and the demonic in our health, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually? Well, you know, how I look at it is when someone have cardiac issues or hypertension, are we going to say that's a demon? Right. right. You know, we know that everything on a negative spectrum is as a result of sin. It influences um, sickness, disease, everything that is on a, on a negative nature, even our mind, those thoughts. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that it's a demon, which right. is very different than something being influenced. Yes. You know, like when I think of a broken bone, um, you go to the physician and, and the physician would say, hey, you know, you, you have a broken bone, you need to put it in a cast. But the problem is that's just part of the issue. The issue is the trauma that comes with the broken bone. Right. And that trauma is not a demon. So that's right. kind of where the book tried to give the, uh, the readers a, an understanding that we need to be smart. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yes. And I think that's so good because everything impacts who don't... Um, just isolate that's physical and nothing else. Right. That's mental and nothing else. Exactly. Right. I mean, you address an interesting topic in this book, generational illnesses, which right. I found very interesting. Explain what it looks like and is there a way to address generational illnesses? Like, is this a real thing? Well, you know, when I look at generational illnesses, I look at it, you know, like from a medical perspective, people who have diabetes and health, medical health issues, a lot of it is hereditary. Right. Doesn't mean that it's a demon traveling through grandparents to parents. It's just a factor of uh, the foods we eat or the culture or, or the whole environment that generates different form of medical illnesses, just like mental illness. Right. I mean, how many of us whose parents, my, like my dad, for example, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying it on screen, but he was yeah. an alcoholic until he became a believer in the kingdom of God. And it was very easy for me to become an alcoholic because my grandfather was. Right. So that I see as a generational, just like mental illness, depression, right. anxiety, psychosis, all of those things are also hereditary in some sense. But the good news, yeah. <laughs> the good news is that 
We're in a time and age where we understand that Jesus can heal every form yes. of illnesses. Yes, yes. And Jesus cares about all of our being. Exactly. Physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. I love that. Yes. You know, we have emotional wounds you talk about in this book, which are significant at mm -hmm. times, you know, whether they've come through trauma and healing you talk about takes time and care. I really loved how you address that. What can a person do then? They're carrying this emotional hurt and wounds. How do they, what do they do with that in their life? Well, you know, like emotional wounds are so, the, the best way I can address it is that when someone get a physical cut, if it's not taken care of, that cut can get infected. Right. They go to a physician, the physician will open up that cut, which can be very painful, mm -hmm. take out all the particles that is causing the infection, and then be able to um, suture that cut. Well, we know that God is the healer who heals it after it's sutured, yeah. but the, the healing doesn't stop there. Because three, four months later, now there's a scar. And every time the individual see that physical scar, it's like they get traumatized from the cause of that scar. Right. Now think about it from an emotional perspective. When people are, um, have been abused in whatever way, whether it's sexual, physical, emotional, some people have experienced trauma from a very young age. Some people have made mistakes, like we all do, and have regrets, and, and you know, we, we feel like, as a result, and I come back to that, that statement, we don't have the value. Right. The process that needs to take place is we need to be able to get proper care. As much as we go to church, and I believe God 100% for healing, which God can do, sometimes it's, it's okay to reach out to a therapist, That's right. let them open up that wound that is causing the infection, yeah. and then see the process of healing that takes yeah. place. So when they look at the scar, they can say, hey, you know what? Jesus has delivered me from that. Yeah, that's right. And I love how Jesus provides medical care and emotional care through yes. therapists. We're going to continue our conversation. Thank you for being with us all this week. I so look forward to learning. I'm sure you do too. And uh, we're going to continue it even at the end of this show. But for more information on Dr. Harrison Mungle and all of his books, you can go to 700club.ca.